Hi folks, it's C.I. Spencer here, hoping you're doing okay. Um, so I can't be doing this live this evening, but I did also think that it was probably best to put this together pre-recorded for you, because uh, there's a reasonable amount of detail in there, and I want to make sure that I get everything right for you. Um, yeah, so welcome to a bit of an AT session this evening, um, which is meant to be based on a kit that you take walking uh, for maybe a two or a three day uh, walking expedition. Um, so I suppose the sort of biggest thing for me uh, to fit in and get into this uh, video um, is just to talk about weight and size of pack and all of that kind of thing. Um, weight clearly is really important. The smaller and the lighter you can get your pack, uh, the better it's going to be for you, the more efficient you can walk and also yeah, the less tired you're going to be at the end of the walk. So uh, I thought I'd guide you through all of my kit and yeah, let's make a start. Okay, so I thought I would follow uh, some other AT junkies um, example on YouTube and things like that. And I would lay all of my kit out in a big set for you guys to have a look at. And I thought I would talk through it in different sections. So let's have a look. Okay, so first things first, um, I'm a big fan of food, and so I thought I'd cover the cooking equipment first. Uh, that always feels like a good one to start with. So, uh, as you can see, it's quite a small kit. I'm going to cover food separately, of course, but I wanted to uh, cover this in some detail and give you guys a bit of an idea of what I use when I'm out walking. Um, of course, I'd use a lot of this Exped kit as well for when I'm out canoeing or other things as well. Um, so it's quite versatile and actually once you've got all of this gear you can use it for other types of AT as well. Um, so the first things first, uh, the burner. It's quite a small uh, Coleman burner. I'm going to give you the detail on what it actually is. I can never rem remember the name of it. As you can see it's in some good use um, but it has been an excellent companion. Very reliable. Um, it also, if you can see the slots at the bottom of the burner, it actually heat sinks the gas bottle which allows it to use gas much more efficiently. If you've ever been camping and you found that the gas just seems to uh, flicker and kind of go out quite quickly, um, it's because the gas in the bottle, uh, just down here, gets really, really cold and it just will not generate the pressure to be able to burn. So the burner keeping it warm really, really helps. Uh, so I'm going to put it together and then show you a bit more. So as with a lot of the equipment in this uh, video, you'll find that I've kind of pieced together the best bits from different kits. So uh, the heat shield you can see in front of you is from MSR, as is the uh, titanium kettle, um, which is a superb lightweight piece of kit, um, big enough for your drinks, big enough for your breakfast, big enough for your evening meal, um, all in one pot, really, really simple to use. Um, and very lightweight and very durable as well. It, the titanium has kind of a non-stick type quality, which is useful. Uh, the orange stand you can see in the bottom um, came as part of a kit. Yeah, so as I was saying, the orange stand was part of a kit of accessories for a jet boil, um, which is a slightly more bulky cooking system. Um, whereas as you'll see in a moment, I can fit pretty much all of my cooking gear um, inside the uh, pot itself, which keeps it all nice and secure. Got a few other accessories as well. I always carry a very small uh, bottle of fairy liquid. Um, this is from Nalgene, more about Nalgene a bit later on. Um, a small cut down piece of sponge because size matters. Um, the bag for the burner and the ferro liquid and the sponge also go in there and they all go inside the pot. And I have an all-in-one spork. Um, these ones, I don't know if they even make these anymore, I think they do, um, but I bought a job lot uh, quite a few years ago and I have managed to only break one so far. Brilliant. Uh, otherwise, I've got a very small pot with uh, a tea bag in this case. Can use it to put in sugar or sweeteners or whatever else you like. Um, also got a small piece of cut down towel uh, just so I can clean up and dry off the uh, cooking equipment when I'm done with it. Um, I'll pop it back all in the container and you'll see it all packed up. Okay, so in the last little section for the cooking, uh, you can see that everything's now packed into the pot. And I've also added some useful cord just to uh, hold the pot tight, uh, the lid to the pot tight to stop everything flying around in my rucksack. Um, another small detail, there's a small cover which normally comes uh, with modern day gas bottles. Uh, I keep it attached purely because it pops on and pops off and it lowers the chances of uh, any leaks uh, occurring through something piercing the top of the canister. A really useful little tip and it just helps keep everything nice and safe. 
Let's move on to first aid, um, an area which clearly some people can uh, go overboard with and some people can be uh, have too little with. Some really useful, just small pieces of equipment can make a massive difference to the level of comfort you're going to experience while you're on your expedition. And what I must just say is you'll probably notice on some of the kit that this is out of date. Um, I'm just using these purely as dem for demonstration purposes. It's really important to make sure that all of the equipment in your first aid kit it remains in date. Um, so it doesn't deteriorate or you're not you don't go to use deteriorated equipment when you get out on a walk and if you have to use it in an emergency uh, a few extras i do have um really useful for if you're out on the hills um steri strips are an incredibly useful small uh, material which you can use to close uh, small wounds and cuts incredibly useful and very straightforward to use um, next to those my absolute favorite first aid piece of equipment uh, for when you're out on the hill is compied um, an incredibly good blister plaster system um, comes in all different shapes and sizes i just use a general purpose size uh, but even i get blisters still after doing this for quite a long time and i would recommend them to anybody uh, especially if you have new boots or you're not confident in the fact that you won't get blisters um, you definitely should have some in your kit um, it's a little bit expensive uh, but uh, around about a pound per plaster um, when you buy them as a pack but they are extremely useful what else have I got in here? Um, some tweezers. I, tweezers are a must um, because if you get splinters or things like that, you really need to get those out um, before they cause you a problem. Um, also, you've got some safety pins um, and some micropore tape. Again, both absolutely essential uh, for being able to help support wrapping dressings, uh, clipping up bandages with the safety pins, etc. Uh, again, very, very useful kit. Um, again, the uh, safety pins, if you sterilise one, you can quite happily use that to help aid getting a splinter out as well. Uh, I've got some paracetamol. You would need any other medication you need, of course, that's quite important. Um, but cleansing wipes, dressings, bandages, um, crepe bandages as well for support, gloves, um, a sling here as well, and uh, some just general purpose plasters. Um, again, need to be in date. They need to have. They need to be sticky. They need to work when you need them to. Uh, generally, the ones you get in these kinds of kits can come off quite easily. So, I just recommend getting some uh, slightly more adherent ones, which can be better. Um, the other thing you may be slightly surprised to see is a mirror. Um, I keep a small mirror in my kit, uh, just in case I well need it, but also. Um, as a signaling mirror, so in the event of an emergency, uh, we can signal for help. Um, why is it in my first aid kit? Because the likelihood is that if I need help, I'm using my first aid kit as well. So it's just a nice go-to place. Um, there's also a small whistle strapped into the first aid kit, as well as a small torch, um, for the same reasons, really, that I'm kind of not going to need them unless it's an emergency. So it makes sense to have them in there. Anyway, that's it for the first aid kit bit. I'll get that packed up and we'll move on. Okay, so after food and emergency equipment, hydration has to be the most important element of the equation. Um, here I just used two examples of the kind of kit that I use. Um, a bladder on the left, or a camelback, or a platypus, or whatever other brand that you might know of. Um, quite useful to have a bite valve on them, um, because you can drink from them nice and easily. But also uh, a shut-off valve is quite helpful to stop it leaking in transit. Um, also, I use, uh, a, again, this is a Nalgene product, a litre bottle. Um, you'll notice they're both wide uh, opening devices, so you can uh, refill them in streams or in other water sources uh, which are clean. Um, how do we know they're clean? Generally, we would only take water from sources in mountainous areas, um, generally above the five, six hundred metre mark, uh, whilst knowing that they're clean and we would inspect kind of probably 100, 200 metres up from the stream, just to make sure that there was nothing um, dead in the stream or anything like that, which was going to uh, be putting nasty materials into the water. Before we get on to the larger items like tents and sleeping bags and clothing, I thought I'd just cover a few of the sundry items as well, which would be important to take with you. Um, so working from left to right, we've got sun cream, uh, we've got jungle spray or bug spray or bug um, repellent to stop you getting bitten. Uh, especially in the campsite, that is a nightmare. Um, 
Carmex lip balm is an absolute lifesaver. Any lip balm, in fact, is amazing. Um, that one has an SPF factor, so that it acts as, as a, a sun protection on your lips as well. But there is nothing more demoralizing than having chapped lips when you are out in windy conditions. So that's not always a must for me. Small things that make you comfortable. Um, also, I, you'll notice that all of the toiletries I take with me are miniatures. So we've got miniature toothpaste, um, we've got a small roll-on deodorant, uh, a miniature shower gel, um, or I might take a solid bar of soap, whichever. Um, normally I would also cut down a toothbrush or use a small travel toothbrush. Um, I've also got a charging cable and a power bank. Um, not really necessary though, if you are not gonna be using your phone a lot, uh, but clearly as a leader or a member of staff, it's useful to be able to charge your device. Um, also, I've got a head torch. Um, I prefer a head torch only because it means you're, you have your hands free to be able to do things. So if you get into a campsite when it's dark, you can put up the tent without having to worry about holding the torch as well. Um, I've got tissues and a handkerchief, which might you might find slightly confusing. Handkerchiefs definitely for the nose. Uh, the toilet tissues are for going to the toilet. Um, it's just easier than carrying a whole roll of toilet roll. Um, quite useful and if you have any relatives who do a lot of traveling or anything like that the uh, kind of travel sizes for different stuff um, are quite readily available and of course you can refill them which is quite useful okay so if we look at kit that i would be wearing uh if we to work from the top left down to the bottom right uh, i would always take a very lightweight base layer um, in synthetic um, material rather than cotton or wool um, but I would always take one of those a day, as well as one pair of pants a day and one pair of thin socks a day. And um, I'd also take one pair of walking socks to walk in um, on top of the thin socks. But I would also take one dry spare pair, uh, which would live in a dry bag in the depths of my bag, just in case everything get absolutely soaked through. Generally, I'd only take one pair of walking trousers, which you can see at the top centre of the screen here. And then on the right hand side, I've got different layers. So at the top right, I've got my waterproof top and my waterproof trousers. And then I've got two different windproof layers. Uh, so depending on the season, I might take the thicker one that's underneath. Or I've got a super thin one uh, for the top. Um, and again, I think the biggest thing to think about with this whole uh, exercise is um, think of it relatively to cost. I mean, there are some excellent shops these days. Uh, Mountain Warehouse in Whitney, for example, um, has great deals on really cheap kit, uh, which will get you through. Don't go out and buy really expensive equipment, but I'm just trying to talk through kind of some of the principles of what I would take with me. Um, the layering is really important. I've also got a kind of thin uh, or reasonably thin fleece here as well. Notice it's all synthetic material, so it's really quick drying. Um, and it means that actually, potentially, I could have base layer, fleece, windproof and waterproof. So I've got four layers if I need them for walking with. Um, I've also then got one other layer for when I'm in the campsite, um, which is just wrapped up here. Um, it's a down jacket and it is superb at keeping you warm. It's like wearing a sleeping bag, um, but you do have to care for it a little more. These days you can also get synthetic versions, which whilst they're not quite as warm, um, then probably 80 to 90% as good. And because they're synthetic, it doesn't matter if you get them wet. Um, down, you do have to be particularly careful with and be able to keep it dry. Um, speaking of keeping things dry, I'll talk about that in the next section. When it comes to keeping the extremities of my body uh, warm and cozy, I generally would take uh, the kit on the left here, so the wrap gloves and the red hat. Um, they're kind of my go-to uh, hand gloves. And then I also carry a spare hat and gloves, which are on the right-hand side. Um, generally, I've also got pairs of gloves for different seasons as well. Uh, but if I was going out this time of year, uh, or probably as far early as, as kind of January, February time, depending on the place I was going, uh, but in kind of, yeah, England, Wales, um, I would definitely stick with this kit. So let's talk about keeping things dry. Um, in truth, there are lots of very easy ways to keep things dry, um, mainly just using uh, plastic bags or bin liners or things like that. Uh, but there are some nice cheap and easy solutions to be able to keep your kit that much drier and uh, that much more organized within your rucksack. Um, so I've got brilliant um, X-Bed, 
dry sacks, uh, which come in different colours for different sizes, which are excellent for colour coordinating within your rucksack. Got a dark green version of this as well, which I can use for my hat and gloves generally. Um, and then I've got different sizes and different colours to be able to distinguish between the kit that's in my rucksack. Um, you'll see me use different ones for different things, but generally I'll use these two orange ones for my down jacket and my sleeping bag. Uh, more on the sleeping bag later. I've got a very large one which I'll kind of put all of the stuff which doesn't have a, a waterproof home in my rucksack. Um, anything that doesn't go in a waterproof stuff sack already. Uh, the yellow one, I would actually generally use the uh, put the outer from my tent in there uh, because when you put your outer from your tent away in the morning, generally it's quite wet and so actually it's the perfect thing to be able to do to put it in a dry bag to keep the water in and stop it from getting the rest of your kit wet. So a useful tip there. Uh, one more which I would split up for the inner of the tent uh, and if I was camping on my own clearly I would I have a one-man tent for, for that purpose uh, but also I'm going to talk about a two-man version uh, so the inner would go in this one for the person I was walking with to take with them. Let's talk through sleeping gear. Uh, fairly briefly <clears throat> I use uh, a superb lightweight um, two-third length roll mat. Uh, it's a blow-up roll mat or a self-inflating roll mat from Thermarest. Um, it's actually about 10 years old now and it has been faultless, uh, so I really do recommend them. Um, the other things I've got are my sleeping bag, which is a summer weight down sleeping bag from Cumulus. Um, it is a down sleeping bag, hence the size. Uh, again, requires some care, but with the right maintenance, um, that again is seven or eight years old now and has been absolutely brilliant. The other piece of kit which I really do recommend to go with the sleeping bag, um, especially of this sort of weight, is a uh, silk liner. Um, what does the silk liner do? It serves two purposes, really. Uh, it One, it keeps you slightly warmer. Um, so the sleeping bag is rated at two degrees uh, as a comfort level, but using a sleeping bag liner generally will drop that down by around about four degrees. So for a summer sleeping bag, it is absolutely perfect. And if I did get too cold, I could also use my down jacket, which would provide another layer of um, down as well, which would obviously boost it massively. So there are options. Um, but again, really quite nice and small size, uh, and you don't actually need to spend the earth on this kit these days. Uh, there are some excellent lightweight and cheap options on the market, which will allow you to do this very lightweight. One small item I didn't mention, uh, not really a necessity, but uh, it is quite useful. And especially if I wanted to have a proper shower, if I went to a campsite somewhere, uh, and that is a travel towel. Um, again, I could use it if I went to a, a nice clean lake or something like that. So, it, so it's quite a useful piece of kit to have in. Uh, if you really did want to go super lightweight, then I would just take baby wipes to be fair, and that would serve my needs for uh, two to three days without a problem. Okay, so let's talk tents. Um, clearly there are absolutely thousands of tents on the market. And I really use some sort of general guidance uh, for lightweight camping that really you want to end up with around a maximum of 1.5 kilos of uh, sort of kind of pack weight uh, per person for, for an average tent. So um, tents we will purchase for the squadron for DV, for example, very soon are Vango tents and they come in at around about 4.2 kilos for three people. So that uses that 1.5 kilo per person adage quite well. Uh, the tent in front of you here is a North, Pe North Face Tadpole 2. Uh, I'll put a photo of it somewhere so you can see what it looks like. Uh, you'll have heard me in my tent review if you watched it on the Thames Valley Wing Adventure Training page, uh, but I love geodesic and semi-geodesic tents. Uh, this is a semi-geodesic tent um, and they are superbly stable and resilient tents and they're also very lightweight. We've got aluminium poles. You'll notice that there's a different tent peg bag on the left-hand side. Um, that's because the tent actually came with stainless steel poles, which are quite heavy. Um, and I swapped those out for aluminium because they're a bit lighter. Working from left to right, I also bought a ground sheet for this tent. Very, very useful when you're lightweight camping because although it does represent a little bit of extra weight, what it actually does is protects the rest of the tent from uh, getting filthy and wet. And it means that you can put more of the tent away, dry and pack it down more compactly 
and keep um, dirt separated from the rest of the tent, which has also improved its longevity. Um, again, this tent for me, I think is eight years old this year and I've kept it very carefully. Uh, I unfurl it and I dry it out after every use uh, inside and then it's, it lives inside and I keep it lofted in a very similar way to sleeping bags uh, where I put them in a larger bag so that air can circulate around them and they don't crush uh, under their own weight or they don't crush with folds. I folded them up here purely for to illustrate, um, but again, I mentioned earlier on, uh, the outer, which is this one down here, would go in the yellow dry bag I mentioned, and the inner could go in the black one. And again, you switch those between people. Um, and it really means that it's very lightweight for a two person sleeping, uh, sleeping accommodation. Uh, and it's roomy inside. It's, it's a really nice tent to be in. So you will get to see the bag completely packed with all of the gear I've shown you so far at the end. Uh, but this is my rucksack. It is an Osprey uh, 36 litre. And again, I think I've had it seven or eight years now. Um, you can tell I bought a lot of kit about seven or eight years ago. Uh, but it really has served me well again. Um, it has got a few uh, kind of minor sort of scrapes and marks and stains. But on the whole, it's been an absolutely fantastic rucksack. Um, it comes with dual opening. So it has an opening at the top here and then the mid zip um, around this section actually opens up to reveal the main compartment, which is really useful for being able to access different parts of kit. Uh, it also has a pocket in the front. Uh, it's got a small pocket here uh, for this red bit, which is the waterproof cover. Uh, again, something I wouldn't be at without even with packing everything uh, up in dry bags uh, and it slips nicely into the front of the bag and you really don't realize notice it um, in amongst the packing. A couple of other useful features, uh, it's got two pockets on the top which are extremely useful for small things and then it's got a couple of hip pockets as well which I normally keep sweets and other bits and pieces in um, just to allow me to access them nice and easily when I'm on the move. Finally, it's got a couple of um, small elasticated pockets at the sides. I don't really find I use them for that much, um, but they can come in handy. And also, uh, this has got an aerated back pad to help keep your back nice and cool. Uh, and also, it doubles up quite nicely uh, for my map case, which I'll show you later on, which I slide into there when I'm uh, travelling with it, because it, it keeps it nice and safe. And it just is uh, nice and visible for me to get to when I need it. Just a very small bit on my walking boots. Uh, clearly the bag doesn't go with them, uh, but it is quite useful for transporting. Thanks for that, Ikea. Um, they're Mindles. Uh, I have had, I replaced these in 2011, so they're nine years old now. Um, I did have to uh, re-stick one of the soles this year, um, but I did discover that you can actually still buy new stick-on soles to go on the bottom, uh, Vibram soles in this case. These are a mixture of uh, fabric and nubuck boots, and I do keep them, uh, try to keep them relatively clean. They're a little bit dirty at the moment, uh, but the important thing is that when I get home, I dry them out very naturally. They never go near a radiator, um, and they're always dried out in ambient temperatures um, for as long as it takes, really. A couple of bits I always make sure to maintain with them. Uh, I always double check the laces before I go out and I always carry a spare pair of laces um, should I need them. Nothing fancy, uh, just an old pair of laces that I've got just for me to be able to make running repairs with. I've also got some kind of paracord type stuff in the top of my rucksack. Um, so if I needed to repair them, I could. The travel bag's really useful. Um, I always keep a travel bag with me uh, or rather I always keep it in the vehicle that I'm traveling in, uh, just to be able to put a spare pair of shoes in for when I get back from an expedition. Um, and it just keeps the vehicle you're traveling in a bit cleaner, which is helpful. Before I put all of the kit into the rucksack and you see it all packed, I thought I would have a small look through some food recommendations that I would generally take with me. Um, everything you can see in front of you is good to have water added to. Um, I The only thing I'd generally add to this would be some milk powder uh, for the muesli but otherwise everything is um, good to go. You can see small uh, drink sachets. Uh, again, if you have somebody in the family who travels quite a lot, picking these up in hotel rooms is a really great thing to do. Um, and yeah, I, I use these all the time. I think they're brilliant for traveling. Clearly you want to take the rubbish with you. Um, we never leave that out on the hill, but they do just make nice, easy things to be able to use while you're um, out. Also got packs of biscuits, um, boiled sweets are really nice. They're good morale boosters. And then everything else, uh, some options for different savory meals. 
uh, nice easy noodles, couscous, rice, anything that can have water added is fantastic. Um, again, morale boosters, dried fruit and chocolate are really good. Uh, the key with food, I think, uh, and I've always tried to use this adage when I'm walking, is that I try to take things with me that if they get crushed in my rucksack, they still taste as good as they would have done it had they not been crushed. Um, so I don't take bread and things like that. Don't take fresh fruit generally. I might take an apple for the first day or, or an orange for the first day or something like that. Um, but I wouldn't expect it to last any longer than a day generally. Okay, so that just talks you through a few of my ideas um, for the rucksack and the kit that I would take walking with me. Um, there really isn't any kind of hard and fast rule as to what you should take with you. Uh, you will find whatever works for you. Um, but I think the best thing to do is spend as little as possible to start with. And if you find you really enjoy this stuff, um, then over the years, invest in whatever works for you. Um, talk to different people, uh, talk, talk to them about what kit they use. Uh, with a lot of the clothing, you'll find that certain manufacturers um, fit certain different shapes of people particularly well. Uh, for example, I only ever really use uh, the top half of my kit is generally RAB. Uh, and the bottom half, the trousers, are generally mountain equipment. But those are the brands that I've found work for my shape and my body style uh, over the years. Y you'd probably find different things um, and different things that work for you. But uh, as I say, that's part of the sort of learning process with it. Let's get it all packed into the bag and I will show you what we'll put away. Whilst I'm just packing away as well, uh, something came to mind. And that was, what would I use as a pillow? Um, I can see it being a question, so I thought I'd answer it here now. And the answer is I'd use one of the dry sacks and I would pack some clothes into it. Uh, one to keep the clothes dry from any dew or anything that might get into the tent. Uh, but also then it acts as a really great pillow. And guess what? I've doubled up some of the things that I'm taking, so it takes up less space in my back. Okay, so now, as you can see from the time of that's video, we're left with my rucksack, uh, which has got 1.5 litres of water in it and all of the kit I need for a three day expedition, including the food. Um, the bits just off to the side are the tent poles and the tent inner for the person I'd be walking with. And then the things that I'd be actually wearing, so the trousers and the walking socks, uh, walking boots are just over behind me. Um, yeah, so hopefully you found that useful. Uh, as I say, you can get, you, it can be done. You can get it into 36 litres. Um, do you need to sacrifice a few things? Yeah, of course. Um, but you can still see, uh, stay very comfortably as you've seen from the amount of gear that I've managed to get inside. Um, yeah, hopefully you found it really interesting. Uh, I quite enjoyed getting it all out again. I uh, don't normally lay it out like that. Normally just sort of throw it all in at the last minute. Uh, so it's actually quite cool to break it down and talk about it a little bit more. Um, do get in touch if you have any questions on this all. Thanks a lot. Thank you.